Preparing students to demonstrate mastery of math state standards can feel like a dull, unending cycle of equations and practice problems. Unengaged, frustrated students can weigh on teacher confidence and lead to uncertainty about overall achievement. Two Ivy League trained engineers observed this struggle and created a way to transform how students learn the fundamentals of math. Through the innovative Acoletics math program, EDA has helped more than 400,000 students achieve success on state administered math tests and transformed the academic strategies and performance of schools nationwide. Acoletics uniquely designed supplemental materials and tools are well aligned to your state standards and provide a clear path to exceed state proficiency standards. Through ongoing professional development, you will uncover common challenges and activate solutions that promise to improve student achievement in your school. By partnering with EDA and choosing Acoletics, you can start to see an unprecedented return on your investment in as little as one school year. Don't procrastinate on giving your teachers the tools to help students achieve their highest math potential. To learn how you can dramatically improve classroom instruction and learning, test scores, and student confidence, call, email, or visit Acoletics online today. When daily tasks become too painful, it's time for change. Let our pain management and wellness practice, Valentine Integrative Health, elevate your quality of life and ease your discomfort. Visit us at valentineintegrativehealth.com and start your journey to a fuller life. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. How are we doing? <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Happy hump day. Yeah. Good over there. Don't be afraid of me. Ooh, I just took go. the nap of all naps, you guys. I'm waiting for my face to wake up. So I'm so sorry. Hey, but I'm you like, are so beautiful. It doesn't matter. You are very kind. Look, we have, look, look at the show there. Look at the little sheet you got there. Oh, shoot. Oh, we have a production sheet today. Wait a minute. Yes. Yes. Just like the old days mm -hmm. when we did our radio show together. Okay. Let me just say this, babe. We got a big show today. We got a lot going on. We got a lot of great content. We got a really big show. We got a really big show. Uh, we got we got some real good stuff. So okay. sit down. Go get a drink. I have coffee. Get you a drink. It's going to be, a, we're going to have a nice show today. Okay. Well, let me tell you where you are. You are with Allison and Mark, and it's the Married in Media podcast. We are two media pros who have three grown kids, happen to have been in the business for 30 years. For, from, how many years for you? Yeah, forever. Forever years. And uh, we talk about everything from pop culture to politics, family issues, <laughs> everything we talk about. Is based in a whole lot of love. It's We're based in a whole lot of today. love. I'm actually sharing. Oh, I'm sharing this link with uh, again Mary. We've reconnected my child, my college uh, friend. Reconnected. So, um, you know. So again, excited about the show today. You just vanished, babe. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we got a lot going on, and babe, look, I we I typed out the show. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Okay. In no particular order for those who just want to check in and check out. And in fact, everybody's not on. Actually, babe, sadly, we we have some issues. <laughs> we have, you know, I was hacked on Facebook for those who are Let's watching. Talk about it. So the Allison, your your thing wasn't hacked, but um I maybe for security they don't didn't allow us to stream from your location. So that big audience of a hundred thousand plus we don't have. And my account, which is still intact, they didn't allow it either. So now we have our, our LinkedIn, our LinkedIn people okay. and our YouTube people. So shout out to you and also our in, our um, our uh, Instagram people. Now, so am I hacked as well? I don't believe you're hacked. I just know we're just not. I think did, Facebook. Did you all hear that word? I don't believe. I don't believe you're hacked. I think Facebook to protect, protect everything eliminated us uh, ha having access, this having access to our Facebook. Okay. 
Well, let's talk about it anyway. For the one person who is joining us right now, we love and appreciate you. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay. So in no, in no particular order, baby, run down what we got, okay? Well, let's just get into it. Oh, you like that? Yeah. All right. Well, first up, let's go to your sheet there. Um, this is, I put the, I put the, the, the heavy first just for us to get it out of the way. You know what? Actually the light first, because Carl with a K is standing by patiently okay. and Carl with a K is now joining us live. Carl with a K, hey. what's up Carl with a K? Hey, you guys doing? What's up my uh, brother? Yeah, I'm good. How things work out at HU? For the, yeah, we're still waiting on the money. Oh, oh, okay. We, we got to know this. Is this, this going to happen? Yeah, we're still we're still waiting on the money. So okay. Well, for uh, well, fortunately for me, I found out it's happening at all universities. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's the sad thing. I know, yeah. and you know, um, I think we mentioned it last time, but our baby Spencer's um, roommate affected just not going to be there this quarter, this semester because mm. it doesn't have the funding. So it's a real issue, uh, you know. It's so we're, we're in a space where you hear a lot about uh, debt forgiveness from uh, this, uh, you know, the administration. So, mm. and then in the same time though, where's, you know, the, money? where's the funding? So <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, say a prayer for all the kids. I hope you stay on track. No, hope you stay on track. So we're waiting next, by this time next week, hopefully we'll have a better answer for you. All right, <laughs> yeah. Carl with the K, Carl, are you working tonight? Yes, I'll be at Arundel Mills tonight. I uh, switched to Tuesday nights and Owings Mills at TGI Fridays. So I'll be at the TGI Fridays and uh, Arundel Mills this evening. And I'll be uh, next Tuesday. I will be back at the TGI Fridays in Owings Mills. So oh, next all week. The mills. He's the king of the mills. <laughs> He's at the mills. Exactly. <laughs> Only in the Anne Arundel, right. Okay. What you got tonight? <laughs> all right. Let's start with a little bit of something a little different. I've pulled this out of one of my archives. Okay. Go Which ahead. of the following is a well-known work by the sculptor Selma Burke? Did she do the Lincoln Memorial, the profile of Franklin D. Roosevelt, or Martin Luther King's memorial? Um, do you know? I do not, but I think it's I think he's throwing us a curveball. I think it's the first one. And I think it's the I think it's the second option. And it is the second option. Yeah. Okay. It, it I is, did, I did, in my brain, it was in my brain somewhere. Back well, here. and the unique thing about it is her sculpture of his profile mm -hmm. is the sculpture is the is the same the uh, profile on the dime. On the dime. That's on fine. Okay, okay look yep. at you. Go ahead. Yep. yep. My dime piece is. Uh, you <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. You have a very educated woman. I, I do. do. She's beautiful inside and out, and smart. And smart. And has a good job. So. <laughs> That's I'm right. That's right. <laughs> next up, football season starts next week. So what team drafted African-American player Bobby Mitchell in 1962 to become the last team to integrate? Yeah, I know this one. The last team. Was it my team? Yes. Yeah. Allison it was the Seymour's then Washington Blankskins. Yes, the, the, yes. the Washington <laughs> Racists. Well, that was the team. That's oh. they, they they find a way, but you know they're you know that that was when I found that I for some reason I was thinking it was Baltimore, oh, and no. then when I realized it was Washington, I was like, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on a side note, uh, Carl, I found out something. I was like, that's interesting. The um, now of course my my brain's not working, but mm -hmm. so you know the NFL owners really are just really that that class. They're just, they were the wealthy, right? They were the wealthy oil barons and others who ran mm -hmm. the world. Yes. And so I found out, I saw an article that was interesting. Uh, Kansas City's owner, um, I'm blank right now, um, who, who's who's a famous person. Right, I know you're talking and the, about. And, the, and his grand, the grandfather mm -hmm. uh, was a famous person, a famous oil person. And it's interesting, Kansas City kind of has a good reputation, whereas... The Redskins kind of have a bad reputation as far mm -hmm. as ownership being racist. Kansas City doesn't have that same reputation because of the ownership. But the grandfather, come to find out, used to fund the Nation of Islam because really? he believed in separation of the races. Oh. So for years, he funded the Elijah, uh, Elijah Muhammad uh, Nation of Islam. And also, you remember those conversations about the Klan having a relationship with the Nation of Islam? Yes, because separatists were in line with that. So he was they one like, of the big funders of, of the Nation of Islam back in the 60s. And then it's interesting how in a generation, though, the reputation, in a sense, or the family changed. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's, that that's be interesting because I know I know Cleveland was, you know, of course, um, was very, very, you know, Jim Brown and so forth. So they yeah. were they and a couple other teams in New York and so forth. But yeah, that, that surprised me that Washington. It didn't surprise me to when I found out. It yeah. just I just expected it to be someone else. Yeah. And last but not least, going back a little history, Dory Miller, I'm sure you've heard of him, was the first African American to receive the Navy Cross of Valor for his bravery during what war? Now I figured you two would know that, so this is more for your audience. <laughs> Well, I, you know, so funny. I see him. I see him. Mm -hmm. I see the favorite, the famous picture. I see the famous action. But actually, I'm blank on the war. Oh, don't judge me, yeah. Carl with a K. <laughs> no, and I am too. Sadly, I don't readily know this history. But when you said "see you," I thought about yeah. World War II for some reason. Mm -hmm. Bell bottoms uh, with the outfit, with the right. bell bottoms, and the navy. But that's Carl, what I thought. So, Carl, I know. Thank you for giving us credit for being brilliant but <laughs> we are not brilliant no, what, what he, is it? What's, what's he, he was a cook who took over um, a battle gun at pearl harbor world war ii so, world okay. war ii go babe she, you. She, her, her, her essence even knows when she <laughs> doesn't even know her her, her Sometimes, essence world war ii um mm -hmm. carl before we let you go I, and we're talking good. about this uh, today, which I hate mm. to even talk about, but uh, did you see the news that came out that uh, one of these, uh, what I'm assuming is a very uh, far right wing uh, arm of the Republican Party came out and basically said it's the, the, the National Federation of Republican Assemblies that they're pulling up the Dred Scott decision to say that Kamala Harris is not eligible to run for president because of because she's not a citizen because in fact she is an enslaved person under the constitution. Have you seen this? No, I have not. Yeah, so uh, they 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 cited the uh, the 1857 Dred Scott Supreme Court decision, which I'm pretty sure was overturned. So they didn't say that last part, but right. uh, they stated that people that but enslaved people weren't citizens to argue that she is ineligible to run according to the Constitution. So, so are we, we now all enslaved again? That's what, and you know, it really I've I've talked about I mean, this with people, and because it really upset me, even mm -hmm. that she would be there and thereby all of uh you know people of african descent in this country would be considered enslaved and really not citizens and so it really struck me it really bothered me but yeah. if people have been just like don't it's ridiculous and yeah, you know but um had you heard that i have not heard about that yeah, yet i will definitely look about. into it because um yeah. and that's it's always interesting because a lot of people get confused between the plessy versus ferguson and the dred scott decision and how those okay. two are different yeah. Right. Yes. So, but so, yeah, that would be uh, so. Basically, the whole NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess that would make. I guess we would be entitled to reparations now, wouldn't we? Well, no, because you'd still be considered. Oh, I still be enslaved, right? You'd still be uh, technically, as I said, the group says that it also is challenging those who have, I think, parents who weren't yeah. born in this country. So Including, the same group is yeah. uh, challenging the right of Vivek Ramaswamy and Nikki Haley to appear on the Republican uh, primary ballots because they're basically saying uh, no person except a natural born citizen shall be eligible or a citizen of the United States at the time of adoption of the constitution shall be eligible for the office of president. So they're just, I, 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 I want to feel like when this came out, uh, people were even uh, like, even people in the Trump campaign were like, now this is ridiculous. This is well, that's what I want to hope. So and it's a, it's a, it's a group. It's not, you know, it's a, it's a group, but it's yeah. out in the world yeah. and it's, it stinks. It makes you feel like it does seem well, the fact that they get impressed and maybe it, maybe it might be because we got the internet. Cause I do remember when um, they were trying to say it was like three black guys who were saying that they were in the black Panther and there's the new black Panther movement. But it was like three yeah. guys. And they, yeah. arrest, they, I mean, they got and getting arrested. I think that guy got arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, Ugh. great. We're gonna treat you like we treated. The, anyway, just a little bit of history because it's, it's a lot of it isn't pretty, but that is interesting and um, very yeah. much so. It's something making news, Carl. Uh, <laughs> one question for you, Allison. When you were at WTTG, did you know anybody in the traffic department? Yeah, sure. Did you know uh, Carol also Brooks? Was she still there? Hmm. That I name you would remember. I do, yeah, I would have remembered. I right. would have remembered that. Well, the reason why I remembered her name is I worked with her at TTG. Okay. And I met Angela this past weekend at um, the Sigma Crab Feast. Yeah. And found <laughs> out that was her aunt. 
Oh, that's her aunt. Okay, got you. No, no, met a lot of beautiful people, but I don't know yeah. that I met her. And so, so Carl, where are you going to be? Let people know if they want to join you tonight. Okay, tonight, Arundel Mills, TGI Fridays. I'll be starting at 7, three games of 25 questions. So I'll be there till about 9, 9.30. So we roll with a lot of fun. I have something I call a shots round question. So mm -hmm. if you get that correct, I buy you whatever you're drinking. All right. And nice. uh, we have give out gift, yes. we give out gift vouchers for our winners so it can take care of part of your check. And we have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Tonight's topic is last week I did 1990, up to 1990 with movies. So today we're doing 1990 to 2024. All right. All about like the so I got low down, that. dirty shame yeah. to uh, school day. So it's a lot of fun. That's our time. I love it. Well, Carl, thank you Thanks, so much Carl. again. And Carl, we have a, uh, okay, what's up? Nikki's checking in. So Carl, we, we're we going to, good news. We're going to be have our first live show September 26th. And okay. so- it's a Thursday, and hopefully you'll be. Oh, I can do that. I can do oh, that. Awesome. Yeah, because they because they moved me from they moved me from Thursdays to Tuesdays, so I can be joining you. So we get before. a chance to see Carl with a K live, <laughs> and our first live is going to be at the uh, commentary out of Virginia. Oh, baby, got your phone? Good. You got your phone? I have one. Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to send you the link so you can put it on on your Facebook page. Okay. Um, so, Carl, thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, Carl. All right, thank you. you. Carl you. with a K, ladies and gentlemen. So again, another exciting show. I just uh, did a workaround, babe. So I'm gonna send that to you. Oh boy! I'm gonna yeah. send this to okay. you. Um, We're having, if you didn't know, Mark's Facebook got not hacked. It got. Uh, I got duped. Taken over. Okay, I got duped. Okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna say I'm not that smart, but I'm just gonna say I helped somebody. I gave someone access to my Facebook, and they don't then, ever do that. <laughs> and they then yes hopped in there. Uh, I don't know. It's never. I'm gonna see this one, babe. Um, two oh two. This uh, is this the one? I just sent it to you. This is not okay. Two hundred two number. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us, the people who are uh, with us now, and uh, we, yeah, had some issues. Don't we got ever, a great show don't, today. Don't ever, yeah. Okay, I just sent it to both your phones. Now. Alrighty. And then, if you can copy that and put it on your Facebook page, um, so. Excited because, again, you know how it is. And this is how the challenges of life, uh, how it does. Right? I worked on the show. <laughs> I worked on the show. Got everything lined up. And I'm just hoping everything's okay. Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's go on with the show. For the people, for the two people in the room, they deserve. Yeah, we'll go ahead they and do They deserve that. it. Can you go ahead and do that? Okay, so this is now? Yeah, copy. Just copy okay, that we'll and put it on, on, your, just, okay. on your page. So, um Do, do, do. So good news. Wendy Williams fans have a reason to celebrate. She was spotted in public for the first time in over a year. Allegedly, the sighting occurred on August 19th. She visited a store in New Jersey and posed for a photograph with the owner. According to page six, she was sharp, upbeat and aware, even bubbly. She apparently was looking for holistic products. The store owner said her son, Kevin Hunter Jr., was there explaining some of the products to her. OK, we say so, it's, it's um, Dr. Sabi's son. Well, the shop, right? Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't sure about that. Was that? If that's the case. There's a picture of her and yeah. uh, the case, and so you can tell by the Birkenstocks. The <laughs> his and toes the picture on, and the picture on his shirt. His toes indicate that's what that is. I just wow. want to know what is in that store. I just feel like <laughs> the more I, I just feel like if I just walked into that store, like the toxins would just flush out of my system. But doesn't Wendy look good? It's to crazy. Which, right. To which I'm trying to understand, like, what's the real story here? Yeah. Is she, you know, because basically she had that same type of uh, dementia that like Bruce Willis has. Mm. And uh, I didn't think that that was necessarily reversible. Well, they say she would, the, the son was explaining to her what the products do okay, and, and things like that. So, you know, maybe, maybe there's some, you know, up for Kevin Jr. I was so happy to help. see her. I was so happy to see her uh, looking more like herself mm -hmm. and, you know, I was just happy to see it. I'm hoping that she's, I'm hoping that somehow she's better. Yes. Because so, that whole docu-series and the whole thing, it was really disturbing to see that. Definitely was. So, okay, babe, you want to hop into our relationship stuff first, or you want to hop into the relationship stuff with Cam Newton and and uh, and uh, Dr. Cheyenne? So let's go with, with Cam, and then we'll go to ours. Okay, so I'm going to have my first, my observation. 
You know, I've been watching. There's a whole new dynamic where I'm keying out like this. Uh-huh. These, what happened? I said, "Why am I keying out like this? Maybe I can't wear black." Okay, go ahead. Um, this this what's happening is, which I think is a good thing and also a, a interesting thing, how it's going to affect or how it affects, um, you know, our our world as far as um, as as far as people who are doing. Uh, broadcast now. A lot of them are former professional athletes. Okay. And um, what we're seeing is the um, now because these guys are many of them are millionaires and wealthy. They're rich guys, and you're starting to see that the lifestyle of the rich and wealthy is different than the average guy. Yeah. But I think. I'd say it's having an effect, though, on I think because of social media it's having an effect on the conversation around relationships, because a lot of the moves which you really realize. And you, I think, you, you again, you know how you know something, but you never really think about it. You know, when you hear these guys talking about their relationships, even like, like you know, it kind of seems like a lot of times the merry-go-round of kind of the same kind of like supermodel. Uh, influencers that kind of date these guys. Mm-hmm. They're, they, you know, hearing their perspective makes you go, okay, I get it. He's like, you know, number one, they know how to date. They know how to date these guys, how to keep their name out of the, out of, you know, out of the streets and things like this. So it kind of creates a loop of that. Okay. But the part two of it is how simply dating them can change your life. You're talking about the women who date famous men. I'm talking about the women who f- date famous men, but I'm also talking about the fact that they are 20 plus year old millionaires simply dating them can change their young lady's life. Okay. So it goes from like a normal, you know, you can't, it's no comparison. Okay. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. This guy can actually, you start dating him. He's now paying for your mama house and your house yeah. and can fly you all over the world. Okay. So the dynamics are different. So anyway, um, a lot of these people have a lot of relationships going on. So I don't know if this was smart. <laughs> so Cam Newton invited um a psychiatrist into his camp and he has eight kids by three different women. Okay. I think he was, was thinking he could probably out talk the scenario mm-hmm. or justify it. And instead he kind of got handled, but I respect the fact that he had the courage to do it. They yeah. had the conversation. Okay. So we have the video. So sit back and enjoy. People see my situation and not think that I'm not high function. What situation? See my situation. That's a very vague question, and it's for you. What to situation even... are you referring to that they're looking at and thinking is not high function? Just my life. Your your life entirely, or your life in my life, my life, my life. See, don't deflect. Let's stay here. And they think that you're low functioning. No, I don't. You just said people see your life and think you're not high functioning. The opposite of that would be low. Functioning. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm not married, yeah. right? I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. I, was, I thought I, I didn't do my research. I thought it was four, but eight. Okay. No, baby. Cool. It's, it's By how eight. many women? Three. And this is the kicker. I want more. Mm-hmm. Now. By multiple women? What's the intent? I just want God by your to wife? bring them. I just want God to bring them. Oh, okay. And you have, so you just. Because bring, my okay. point is this. My desire to get married mm-hmm. is lower than my fear of divorce. So. As you had said, Dr. Bryant, you said it, I didn't say it, I will agree. I'm just taking my time. Drinking and driving is a decision that could change your whole world. Sorry, you can guys, face a life-altering right injury that, or potentially you like death. Your decision to off, drink uh, and drive uh, could permanently um, change someone else's world. Whether you injure them or leave their loved ones grieving. The next time you're out drinking, call a ride share, taxi, a sober friend, or a designated sober driver. The only saying? decision that will change your world for the better is the decision I, I, I to call yeah, so we don't know. Drive sober or get pulled over. Paid for by the yeah. You're not taking your time. I am, though. You're being very action-based. You're not taking your time. You're being very action-based. I'm taking my time. You're being very action-based. You have eight kids yeah. with three different women. Yes. You are creating, procreating, and multiplying. That is not taking your time. You're being very selectively active. Mm. Okay? So you're creating, mm-hmm. in disclaimer, the kids are innocent. They are beautiful and amazing. Anything I say has nothing to do with them babies because I, I can't wait to be a mom and I love, 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 love the ba- kids, period. Um, but you are proactively choosing where you want to be active at. 
and where you want to take your time. Mm -hmm. You want to take your time in having a wife because of your own fears. But you will, and I say this with all respect and love, what I'm about to say next, okay, Cam? But you will selfishly create broken families, even if you're in their life and you're a proactive father, and I believe you're an amazing daddy. I can only imagine with just your presence and, and knowing you thus far, but these families are still broken. Every child cannot have Papa in the house with them. So some child, if not all, all, will end up with some kind of deficit without daddy being there. Mm -hmm. Now, you chose to do that. I'm not saying you sat there and woke up one morning and said, I want to be selfish today, so I'm going to go make a baby. Not saying that at all. But those are selfish acts at the expense of your fear. So at what point do you feel the fear? Do it anyways. And yeah, that is a low functioning behavior to say that I am going to create these homes Oh, let me go better. I'm going to build these houses and put kids and these beautiful women and kids in them, but I ain't going to create a home in them. I'm going to wait till I dissipate my fear to find a wife where I'm still going to be fearful with because there's no such thing as not having some type of nerve or some type of feeling behind marrying somebody who you're spending your life with. And then I'm going to build a home with her while all these other beautiful babies have houses. That's completely unfair and it's selfish. Just tell me when I can solve yeah, almost. That's completely unfair and that's selfish. And so, yes, you're taking your time in this department, but you're not taking your time in this department, which means you're compartmentalizing. And compartmentalizing never works. Compartmentalizing hurts everybody involved. Everybody who's in this box and that box and this box and that box and this box. And then here you go over here trying to figure out what box you're going to feed or entertain or do. Then you're looking outside to figure out who is your next victim to put in the box. It's unhealthy, and it's, it's a huge dysfunction within our black community that I truly believe personally, statistically, mental health-wise, and community-wise, that black men would stop. Black men would what? Stop. Stop doing that. That they would stop that dysfunctional behavior of compartmentalizing and creating houses, not homes, mm -hmm. and then finally a home with the wife and then you have all these other houses that are homeless, but you over here at some point when you do get a wife, if you do, I'm saying if that's what you want, you will, you'll get whatever you want. You're trying to create a home. Totally dysfunctional and extremely, that's the epitome of selfish, epitome of selfish. All right, <laughs> a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Do you think he regretted having her on? No, I think that whatever he's gonna say next, He's going to believe that money is well, going to kids, make it right. The kids right. stay with him, so that that was yeah, that was the kids, stay, the kids with stay with him without their mom. It just yeah, so um, she said, like you said, I the opposite. I, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you that's great, but I just wanted to let you know what she yeah. said after you. Well, I think that uh, yeah, I think that basically. <laughs> Uh, he probably regretted. It. it was that moment, you know, he's sitting there with this whole look. And I would think if somebody came on there and studied his body language with his foot going and his posture, that it was an uncomfortable come to Jesus situation <laughs> <laughs> that he regretted initiating. And, you know, the, here's the thing. So him and I know we were talking about Nick Cannon, too. Nick Cannon has a lot of kids, too. And I think there's this um, sort of uh, desire to leave your mark on the world through mm. having all these different kids, right? And I've and I've not spoken on it in just general terms because I feel like who am I to speak on their choices and these are real people. But if I'm honest, I, I definitely do agree with what the uh, therapist is saying there because I don't care how much money it is. Like I. I would think that to have a child in a home where you had, uh, you know, these two loving parents, if you could do it, like I get it, some, you know, in your situation, like your parents weren't together. So you were raised in a loving environment. I understand that kids can continue to thrive in that environment. But when you go into it knowing, well, I'm not really, I'm not going to be with this mother, but I, you know, like he said, God, well, I want more. You know, no, bro, this is like the, the, the price of admission for this is when you at least try to create a healthy two parent home. Do you know what I'm saying? Right now, and I, the reason why I hesitate to say this is because for all the people who are not in that situation, it's, it's not me commenting on 
your life or no. what the home is. But I'm you talking about be, people. Blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about people who will like Cam, like Nick Cannon, who willingly just are like, yeah, they want to have as much many kids with doesn't matter with whom. And I'm going to be able to take care of them. So there's something about I bet if you asked a kid, would you rather have you know, daddy in the house in any way and these two parents together versus an unlimited lifestyle of riches. Mm -hmm. I bet that kid would want to have both of his parents in the home. And so, yeah, I, I agree with the therapist there. And I know that she's probably going to get backlash because she's speaking on it, but that's just how I feel at the end of the day. If you can like to go into it willing and knowing you have no intention of being with this woman, but they're even, even the whole thing that they're going to live with me, that to me is there's something wrong with that. Like, I'm just going to make all these kids and they're going to live with me. So they're going to be fine. No, like it, it for me, it is it's giving immature. It's giving selfish. And it's it's just like these are the things that I want without doing the other part that comes with that. So that's how I feel about it. I don't know. But I have in the past always hesitated from commenting on it. But yeah. seeing seeing her break it down like that yeah. and in this space, I got to say, just to have kids just to have kids and then you, especially you're going to keep them at, they're going to come live with me. It's almost like you're treating these women like they're, you know, uh, fact baby factories. Yeah. That's how, that's what it's giving to me. And ironically. And he seems unserious. That's what he seems like. Ironically. Yeah. The, uh, that's just what, that's my opinion. What's what going what on, Ronald Truth Hunt? Yes. Um, which the ir irony is she, like, what she went on to say was she was that. Her mother was an addict. Her dad who wasn't, who had multiple families, but he was, she's a daddy's girl. So she's saying just because you come from it can't, doesn't mean you can't have an amazing life. But the reality was, like you said, daddy not being in home is a big factor, even though he's my friend and he's my, he's a great dad. He's I feel like if you can't father. do it, in this situation, because you started off by saying basically do these very high paid public, very public people have a different reality. And they have a different reality in that they are willingly going into this situation knowing they're not, they're not, they have no intention of yeah. marrying, not even marrying. I mean, look, does everybody have to get married? Yeah. Okay, no. But with no intention of trying to make a relationship work here. And I think that does a disservice to the child. I do. And so I, I put down in my notes, uh, ironically, the late Kevin Samuels created this high value man conversation, high value man conversation. What I like what she did was she talked about talking about a high functioning person. And she broke down the high functioning person versus the high value person. Value obviously meaning you have money. Whose show was that? Hers or his? That's his. his so show. he invited her on yeah, to get and destroyed. then tried it. And then Nick Cannon did the same. So yeah. <laughs> I don't have we didn't do Nick Cannon only but you because know what? his uh, Cam's I thought that she had full explanation. And I think that benefits us all to hear the breakdown. Here's the thing. And I, I guess what? If that was on a public forum, they're going to come for her. They're going to well, come they're, for they're, her. They're, they're, the, the, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's actually, they're, they're, they're actually, it's pretty, pretty evenly matched. That's Very good. I'm glad because yeah. Yeah. it's almost like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it, it always is surprising to me how uh, much it seems like women are hated a lot. Well, she and she was breaking down. I thought so about because she was brave to do that. She was breaking it down the dynamic that I think really didn't even broke down. Because again, I think the high value man. This conversation people have now, brothers making forty five thousand now think they have. <laughs> but anyway, mm -hmm. high value man conversation. He was basically Cam was saying something that I've seen definitely not true, and our relationship is a prime example of it. He was saying that no high value woman will deal with a man who's not a high value man, and that's not true. She pointed out. That in fact, most of the time, a high functioning man, regardless of value, yeah. can find a woman. And in fact, this number shows that most high functioning men are with high value, high functioning women. Well, explain high functioning. High functioning basically is emotional intelligence is high. Okay. So you know, there's somebody who's Somebody who knows who they are, somebody who's solid, somebody who's high character, somebody. Okay. And because that does nowadays, that gets thrown away. And you see, that's what I'm saying with young people. See, young people, like, guys, I'm a high value man. I mean, high value, if you have a low, well, if your function ability is low, then what are we talking about? What are we talking about? You know, and so I thought that was a good conversation. And I'm glad, uh, I'm glad people are not just whatever, because at yeah. the end of the day, if I'm, if I'm speaking, 
openly and honestly, if you if you go in willing, if you if you create all these different homes with all these different kids in and you kind of pop in and you, you pop out, yeah, you're not you're not you're not trying. And so as married people, not and no more normal people don't do that. That is like a I guess normal people maybe do do it, but, but it's, different yeah, it's different because you can't afford to do it. You can't afford to do it. Um, and so um, speaking of relationships, we had a great, uh, I think, revelation or situation uh, happen kind of like two nights in a row mm -hmm. in regard to communication in the family. Right. And I think you, you wanted to talk about it, right? Right. So... Um, <laughs> It's so funny. We've talked about this before. We think we've cracked the code. <laughs> we've cracked the communications code. We're still working on it, though. So uh, weigh in on this. Weigh in on this one. It's like, for me, I, I try so much to not be a judgmental uh, mother and wife and all of that. But even when you try to do that, sometimes this face, it, it betrays me. And so I might be saying, um, yeah, that that's that does look good. Like uh, if you did the yard, but maybe you didn't, you just mowed it and like the weeds are still there and it's not right. really right. So I, you have might've spent all day in the yard, just mowing the grass, but maybe didn't put like the finishing touches on it. So when I come out after like two hours and I just have, and then I look like this, you're concentrating on my face. You're waiting. Oh, Hey, you don't like it. I can see it in your face. You don't like it. And I don't even know that my face is doing that, though I am appreciative. So we had one of those moments um, and uh, it was like a full blow up. Mark got mad, y'all. He was he was snapperlicious about it. And I was just like, what do you what do you want me to do? No. And so you said, I would rather you just say, I don't like how you did this yeah. because it betrays you anyway. And in that moment, I felt like. I just got to go to TJ Maxx. I got to get out of this house for a second because I felt like there was nothing really that I could do because I was trying not to be, not, not to be judgmental, stay in a space of gratitude, which I was, but something wasn't done the way that I would have done it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, y'all. It's like two different people. And sometimes you expect things to be done the way that you, you want, you want something to be clean the way you want it to be done. You want something to whatever. And it's just, it's not the same. So how do you get to that? And what you said was you would just prefer that I said, I don't like it, and but like that's, said, that's who I've tried really not to, to be, be because I appreciate what yeah. you have done in this case, basically, because I know it's hard to follow in this case, um, we have a sectional in our basement and I sent Mark a picture of how it's supposed to be because we had taken it apart. And when I saw it, it wasn't put back in the shape and the style that I wanted it to be. And you were like, well, the pieces aren't all there. So we were having basically two different conversations. And the same thing happened with one of our daughters. Yeah. We were in a discussion and she was talking about, we were having a parallel conversation. Yes. So in that in that regard, we were never going to see eye to eye because we're we, about we were going thing. like this and feelings get hurt and emotions get elevated yeah. and all of that. So what do you do? So um, yeah, it was some breakthroughs. And so the, the yeah. takeaway, you said, well, just do it how you want to do it later and don't say nothing. That's basically what you said, right? Well, no, I was saying that's my which, which that you was said my, it again doesn't sound that healthy. Well no, that's my technique. That would be my technique. So what I'm saying so is So to come down and be like, okay babe, this looks great. Thank no, you. And I wouldn't then, say that. I wouldn't say that either. Just don't say anything. I'd just be like, okay, da, 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 da. you know, I guess what I'm saying is so I think it's a no win situation. I think in I think this is what I think. In relationships sometimes because we're too adults who have two different eyes and want things done differently yeah. sometimes it's just you just want to take the l actually what, what so no and, and, <laughs> to be more clear about what i'm saying what i said was actually that you're right we're all we're all different right yeah. we're all different and so how we do stuff is just different so i just said just go ahead and say it because you 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 have you have real expectations on certain things that i don't have you know what I mean? That's and that's the difference. And, that, and, that, and that's the difference. And so that's why I say go ahead and say it because I really don't care as much as you do about blank. You know what I mean? But you care about my reaction. I care about the done. reaction only because I was given an order with specific with specific things. Okay. And so that's what it was. It was like the you gave me a picture of the specific thing that was not exactly what that was. And so I was I was like very I looked at because again I don't know what you again this is putting together some furniture. And what you know and that's the part the expectation of people um one of my 
coping that mechanisms is I think I always acquiesce and my expectations I push to the side. So therefore it creates, it can create that dynamic. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, I think being raised how I was with a hypercritical mother, I think one of my coping mechanisms was I acquiesced all that. Because when you ask me, right, if you ask me what I want, it's, I rarely say, I want this. And I think that's probably a bad habit that I picked up over the years, you know, okay. from a standpoint of, OK, I'm a, so therefore there are very few things when I'm like, I want this like this. In fact, I don't think I've ever said that to the kids, you know, except for something like say cleaning up or something like that. But in relationships, that's what it is. It's managing all those things. So and at the end the of the day, thing- to make to make it plain for mm-hmm. folks, because I think it gets all but to make it plain, if you have done something and it wasn't necessarily and I've asked you to do something and it didn't come out exactly like I wanted it done. But so what is the answer? What is the I just need to say it. Just say it. Go ahead and say it. Hey, okay. I want let's do it this way. I don't want to, I want it this way. I want to do it this way. Okay. I wanted that. I wanted this. And for way. me, that comes off like it doesn't. You know. It's okay. It's okay because okay, that's so what I'm that's used. I'm used to. It. You can do that. It's okay because that's what it is. If you don't do it that way, then I'm. I don't know. Like I can tell you're not happy, but you're not expressing it. Yeah. So that's what. It, that's what probably triggered me. Mm-hmm. I was just chilling, like duty do, and I saw. Wait a minute. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what kind of like, as opposed to, oh no, this isn't what I wanted to do. Okay. okay. So, so we're, we're just, we're, so direct. here's the kicker. So married for this next year, it'll be 25 years. And 25 still, years. Still working it out. And that's the thing about it. It is. And I, I love the fact that you're willing to work it out. Cause some people after at this point, they feel like it doesn't matter. It always matters. It's like we're, we're going back with our daughter and she taps out when it gets, when things get kind of Little whatever lady. she'll tap out. And for me the tap out, that's more frustrating me than anything. You'd be like, all right, <laughs> you go ahead and keep moving. But for me, as you know, that's that drives me crazy. Yeah. When you, when you do the tap out, let's see, what's what I say? How do you express to someone that never listens to you? <laughs> yes. Well, now that's. How do you a, express to someone that never listens to you yeah. and always thinks that they're right? Yeah. And not, then now, so, but you said, Ronald, but then you said they're always wrong. So, <laughs> okay. I think that that goes both ways as far as how is somebody always wrong and you're always right. Well, I think it's I think it's a compromise. And I think that. You know, at a certain point, like we at a certain we at, at a certain point, we employed the the let's agree phrase disagree. "let's agree to disagree" because just sometimes you just have different dis you know yeah different sensibilities and different things matter to you. Yes, but that you know to say that that other person is never right or that they're always wrong, which is what I'm trying to say, the opposite, right? I'm not sure that. You know, I'm not really sure that that's coming from a real healthy place either. So with all due love and respect to you. So, yeah. And I think, Ron, I think it's almost like it is interesting when when people, what hill people choose to die on. You know, it's interesting what um, like this week we, we had. So we had our daughter first and then Allison and I uh, got into our thing. And it is interesting what we choose to hold on to and get really mad about or really after trying to yes yes so what you're saying right exactly Ronald yeah, so it's a compromise it's almost like when especially like if it's a cycle it's, it's kind of happened moment. before it's almost like that moment when right. things are starting to get hectic you might have to tap out and revisit you know when emotions are getting involved and people because you're right people at some point nobody's really listening or one person could be listening and the other person is not listening. I think once it gets to the point where somebody's not listening, maybe it is better to just tap out, you know. And and um, but it makes for and, uh, it makes and, for discourse in the house. I think that there, if there is any a time to say, okay, this is how I feel, this is how you feel, and we we look at things differently. Um, but you know, there's still love. I think that yeah. there's a way because for me, I, I can't like I'm gonna have an attitude. <laughs> I'm gonna have an attitude because and I in that situation what I chose to do, which I rarely ever do, is just take myself out of the situation because um at that point I was feeling like, well damn, I I, I can't really do anything right in this house. Like we got some yeah. sensitive folks yes. that I'm walking around on eggshells in this house and I need to get away from this house for a second. So get out, really think about what's important, what's the big picture here, and am I able to come to some sort of middle ground and compromise? So 
that's what I had to do in Rama. I hope that uh, that you can work it out. So relationship. So speaking of relationship, Keith Lee, the food critic, hit oh, man. the DMV. Keith Lee been giving out money while on the DMV to the tune of thirty thousand dollars. Amazing. Let me say this. Okay, wait, stop. For those of you who don't know, Keith Lee is a very influential social media person, big on TikTok, and he goes to different cities and basically he's a food critic in different cities. He'll try the food, like his family will go and get the food. They don't know it's him because he's getting really popular. And then he'll do a review on yeah. TikTok. And some of these, it's called the Keith Lee effect. Some of these businesses blow all the way up, struggling businesses, mom and pop businesses. So he makes a visit to the DMV and man, it didn't really go the way we get hoped. Well, and you know what? Ronald had another comment. We'll go to Ronald to wrap sure. up this segment. Okay. And then we'll hop in. So Ronald said, right, because I'm picking apart it. Walk away, they come in the room and start. <laughs> yes. Right, Ronald, right. let me tell you something I did. Away, they come in the room. Yeah. I look, this is something I don't know if you want to try. I haven't tried. I don't do it with Allison. But one time I read somewhere, I was working at a station in Alabama, and I just I read this article. I had a, I had a co-worker who Every time I was on the air, he would come in and start arguing. Like the issue we needed to talk about when we're off the air, he would come in knowing I'm preoccupied mm -hmm. and start arguing. And I just happened to, I was 21 years old. I happened to read an article that said, never argue on another person's time. So when he, when he came in that day, I said, uh, he came in, he, I said, I can't talk right now. I'll talk to you after the show. And it was so powerful. Because and number one, gave me time to get my thoughts together. Number two, let me get, you know, think about it and not be ambushed. So if that happens, I think that's, I mean, I don't talk about it right now. We can't, I'm not going to talk about it right now. Let's talk about it tomorrow at noon or whatever. Give it a break. Everybody calms down. The emotions aren't as evolved and it might be a better thing. So back to Babel saying Keith Lee comes. Now, to be honest, the Keith Lee effect, we were seeing kind of the negative kind of, I was seeing the negative kind of comments of people like, well, who does he think he is? But I realized uh, in watching these videos, you're going to see he's giving out money and raising profiles. And and Dukum Ethiopian restaurant mm -hmm. asked him to come. And he actually did do that. So this was a post. He was getting, like Babe said, some negative conversations about the DMV. So this is what he posted to respond to that. And I'm not the target audience just based on the pictures. We're here. I'm gonna start it again. The reason there's no food in my hand is because a lot of the restaurants we've been recommended since we've been here look like this. And I'm not the target audience just based on the pictures. We're here. I ain't got no point to lie. We just out here eating food, praying, staying with our families, minding our business. We also went to a lot of places that were recommended. That's one thing that I really want to make clear in this video is that we went to places that were recommended and we did a lot of research. We've been here for a week and every day since we've been here, we've been in the Sprinter for at least 10 hours a day, just going around trying food, driving an hour to each spot. And since we've been here, we've been blessed enough to sell $30,000 to various restaurants around the DMV. So I don't appreciate it and I don't think it's fair that we get criticized for not doing research or not going to a lot of restaurants in DC or the DMV area. I've noticed how the media has been pushing since we've been here. A lot of media outlets picked up on the fact that I said restaurants out here, in my opinion, tend to lean towards promoting alcohol more than they promote food. That's been headlines more than us being in an actual city and being blessed enough to touch the people that we touch. We ran to a lot of people that was extremely nice. We even went to a comedy show randomly, but that's another reason why I'm keeping most of those videos to protect the restaurant owners because it's not going to be constructive and it's just going to be them getting tore down and I don't want that. Past those 12 videos, I still got about six or seven and I'm going to be releasing those throughout the next couple days. I appreciate y'all. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Okay, well, <clears throat> so basically, because, you know, it takes a while to get, if you're not used to his videos, it takes a second to get used to the way he speaks. For me, the cadence, I was just trying to, you know, but this is TikTok. This is the TikTok world, baby. It moves, right? So one of the restaurants that he uh, went to, people recognize. So basically, in a nutshell, if just getting you caught up, if you're not familiar with who he is and what he does, came to the to the DMV, uh, going to restaurants that people suggested that he goes to. A lot of these places are going to be almost you saw like the carry out type places and that kind of thing. Um, but one of the restaurants people could recognize which one it was. And they re actually responded. 
Um, so the restaurant, because they responded, was oohs and ahs. I, we have been, been to the one on Georgia Avenue in Northwest D.C. And the food, whatever, he, he, he criticized it without saying the name of the restaurant. But he did criticize it. And they actually responded. And they were like, well, if the, you know, for a regular guest, we would, if you weren't satisfied, we would have made it right and this and that. Because they also talked about the customer service experience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, people know their restaurants. And D.C. is, D.C., is is big but it's not that big like especially if yeah. you're going to yeah. local joints and people gonna notice and so people did recognize and that was one of the restaurants where he, he said that it just wasn't up to par so but it is interesting would you rather that he he comes did he should he have not said anything we wouldn't have known if he went to 12 restaurants or not mm -hmm. do you know what i'm saying so he could have come to the area profile the food that he liked or that he was willing to profile that he was still going to give money to whatever the Keith Lee effect. Um, but instead, like, should, in your opinion, should he have said, uh, we went to basically 12 places. I'm only posting like three because the rest of them, basically, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all, but it's out there that uh, DC isn't maybe the, the foodie spot that we, you know, well, what do you think about him even saying, I went to these other places, but I'm not going to post it. Well, I think you got to keep it real. I think, you know, that's the thing. I think nowadays I was just thinking about that. We are in that world now. We're in that world now where traditional platforms, it used to be you went to, you know, whatever. It wasn't a, it wasn't a thing. Now you as a restaurant, a critique uh, on, on, on uh, YouTube, Facebook, any of these platforms or by one of these people can bring you up or bring you down. And so you got to bring your game up. So should he have said that he went to 12 restaurants he's and he's post only six. posting? Sure. Should he have said that? Yeah. Because the rest weren't good enough or. I think so. They were in he, one place he said was inedible. Yeah, that, they didn't have running water. I don't know if the microphone you couldn't hear, but they didn't have running water. So it's like you can have, not have running water. So, he, so, you, so you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, and here's the thing. One of the restaurants he so basically also pays for people. So the, the jerk at night place, which I have heard is really good. I, I don't know what part of the DMV it's in. There was a line around the corner because he was paying for all the food and it's really delicious. So the places that he liked, he put on and he liked and he gave real yeah, critiques. well, and this is this is one in Baltimore. And I think that's why I say if you have not seen him or seen him do his thing, watching this made me a believer and seeing what he does. And I understand I understand the backlash. Nobody likes to be criticized. But let's keep it real. Black owned restaurants, a lot of times black owned businesses, we don't like it, but a lot of times we are not ready. Okay. We gotta get ready. We gotta get our asses ready. Because if you ain't ready nowadays, it's a different world. You can't hide out anymore. Some of my favorite places when I worked in St. Louis. And all the cities I worked in had the worst customer service and took forever to get the food done. And that's a fact. The bigger, the better the food, the worse everything else. And that's something that's not no secret, but we don't like to talk about it because it's like family. But this is, if you've never seen him do his thing, this is what it's like. Me and my family are in Baltimore, Maryland. I got it. Let's try it. And ready one to 10. We spent $115.82. My family gave the customer service a 10 out of 10. They said not only did the owner completely break down the menu, but she offered a bunch of free samples of the house-made drinks that they make. And she was just extremely nice. So I'm excited. I'm going to show you everything I got, and we're going to try it at Red to 10. Truffle fries and AOLI, Brussels sprouts, Tenorio tin fish, which is a tuna from Portugal. It also comes with a bread. I have rotisserie chicken, LIB wings, which are curry fennel sauce toss wings, and a broken down duck kofi gumbo. I say broken down in the terms of deconstructed because this is the root, this is the greens, and this is the kofi potatoes with the duck. And last but not least, pineapple lemonade. We're gonna start with the half roasted chicken. You can see it's dripping. This is, is the half good? roasted chicken brushed with preserved lemon, garlic, and herb oil. We're gonna go no sauce first. This tastes like the butteriest lemon, garlic, I don't know what ALE this is, but this tastes fantastic. 9.2 out of 10, real high. The skin alone. Mm. Oh, yeah. 9.5. Next up, we got the truffle fries. They are seasoned well and they do taste hand cut, but they take out so they didn't really hold up. In the restaurant, I can see these being extremely high, so I'm gonna rate them extremely high as if I got these in a the restaurant. 8.5 out of 10. In a box like that, though, they're like a 7. Next, we're gonna do the wing. This is a curry toasted fennel wing with spicy pepper sauce over house made ranch. Ooh, that's the crunch. Oh, yep. it's spicy, but the curry is robust in flavor. The curry is very earthy. It's a little sweet, too. You get the sweetness from the peppers, but then you get the spice. It hit my lips, like my lips are dangling. Mm, 
This ranch is very deal for. I get it's an eight out of ten. For sure. This is a pineapple lemonade. Boy, this type of stuff get me in trouble. I gotta drink this whole lemonade. Next up is the Brussels sprouts. Not everybody mess with Brussels sprouts, but I do. It's simple and straight to the point, and so am I. 7.9 out of 10. This is a duck confit gumbo. This is how I like my roux. I like my roux to be nice and brown. I'm sure there's a presentation inside the restaurant, but this is my presentation. Do you know this place on Holland Street? No, I do not. I do not. Like I said, that's the power of nowadays. Sneak a little bit. Mm-hmm. The uh, greens by themselves is a nine for sure. I got a potato with some duck, the greens, and a root. This is insane. I love gumbo, and this is such a unique take on it. At least unique to me because I've never had anything like this before. The duck is cooked to perfection, in my opinion. It's seasoned extremely well. It's not very fatty. It's not gamey. The roux is seasoned to... Oh, these potatoes are crispy and seasoned. This whole thing has flavor throughout from the beginning to the end. In my opinion, they balance extremely well. 9.6 out of 10 overall, especially for this to be carry out up here. I'm going on a limb. It's one of my favorite restaurants I had in a while. And I'm happy we came. Thank you for the invite from the bottom of my heart. And as always, after this, I pray and hope. Hi. 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 Hi.
Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So that's I come from that historic uh, perspective yes. Yes. on that. And so I feel like, and I've said it before, when, uh, you know, when you got uh, Harvard, the oldest university in the country and started in the 1600s, and then um, is it Cheney or Wilberforce? I always get it confused. Started like 200 years later. So you're playing catch up. I'm not really going to be like, well, it should be this way because of what it is, because it's still playing catch up. But I get it, Ronald. And I understand that if you spend your money, it should be a different experience. So, And all we have to do is when you talk about restaurants and one thing, that's what I want to say what I love about you is, you know what you Thank want, you, Ronald. knowing what you want, that what Big Mama and them, that generation. That chicken is going to be fried right every time. Yeah, but you might but you might not get the most, like, you know, you might have to settle for a, now what you, what you want, baby? Now, what you want? And we found, like, love in that because we get it, you know, that you're just, you're trying to stay afloat sometimes. And yeah. I think about, like, um, just, you know, j just that whole experience. But, yeah, it, it, being kind costs nothing. And a lot of the things that he's talking about is yeah. not good customer service and all that. And, yeah. In this day and age, you can be put on blast. And because and it's competition too. Now this competition is different too. Yeah. Everybody frying chicken now. So what you gonna do now? Which was I'm gonna tell you this. Girl? I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna close this conversation out with this. There used to be a uh, a Trinidadian food spot on that I used to go to all the time in Northwest DC near Howard University, and that food was hmm. bussin' bussin'. If you know bussin'. what that is, oh my God, it's delicious. Would go there for my rotis all the time, right? And plantain and all that good stuff. But when you went, like you, you were it was going to be in the line, you know. And the the accents were thick, but it didn't matter, you know. What you want? And you just, uh, uh, I want. It's like going to Aldi's and trying to check out when they're doing the thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want cabbage and corn and chicken. And <laughs> You know, uh, that's we, we, we don't have that or whatever it is, right? And so, yes, it's stressful. But when I leave, I'm just gonna. It's a part of what it is, and that's how it is. Um, and it's just like shopping at Aldi's, which I will do. So, oh, um, yeah. And St. Louis said the same. It's what you. It's what you do. But I will say this: this mm. is the last thing because this restaurant is not open anymore, and I miss you very much, Rita's Restaurant. Is I went in one time with one of my photographers. We were on break, and I had prepped my photographer. Okay, this food is worth it. It's delicious. Now they're gonna be rude, and <laughs> you're gonna have to order fast, and yes. there're gonna be people behind you, and then you're gonna get this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's it. calling in the back. You know, yeah, no, 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 and you're just like, <laughs> mm, they're talking about me. When I went in with my man, uh, love him, Carlos Gonzalez, <laughs> Gonzalez from. My man from Cuba. And if you think of the, the most chilled out, laid back, smooth talking, give you that <laughs> smile, you know, schmoozer, flip it in Spanish. And the girls go, <gasps> that's Carlos. We went in. They were so nice to him. Oh, and yeah, he said, my. now explain what this is. And they were like, okay. <laughs> and I was just like, what? So it's a bit subjective. Um, but yeah, the food was good. But you, you just knew what uh, you to expect. So yeah, it's all different. Thank you, Keith Lee, for coming to the DMV. And as a part of the media, I hope that you didn't think that we were negative. We were so excited for him to come. Yeah. We were so excited. Oh, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday. And don't forget, our first live show is going to be at the commentary September 26th. We flyers and stuff coming up. We'll tell you more about it as it gets closer. Have a great one. We'll see you soon. What, what Did you, you have an Ask Allison? No. We, we, babe, we're over an hour. It's time. Oh, it's it is over an hour? It's time to go, baby. Oh, okay. So we'll see you Love next week. <laughs>